advisory uh, orientation. Thank you very much all for coming. Uh, without uh, any delay, let us uh, uh, go to the next slide, uh, Laura. Yeah, so uh, just so all, all of you know, this is the chair of the department, uh, Dr. Leanne Feldman. Unfortunately, she couldn't come to the orientation because it's uh, Jewish holidays. Um, she wishes you all a wonderful uh, stay at McGill. Next uh, slide. This is uh, our Dean, Dr. Josephine Nabatanglu. Is uh, Dr. Nabatanglu here? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> My hair is different, everybody notices. <laughs> so that's a five-year-old picture. <laughs> hey, welcome from our Dean. Thank you. So I'd like to welcome you all uh, to McGill. Uh, I'm in my office, actually, so this is pretty exciting. <laughs> uh, I think this is terrific at the turnout that you have uh, as a, at an orientation for a program. Uh, this is a really big turnout. We're excited to have you uh, join the graduate community uh, at McGill. Uh, I mean, we all realize that this year is very different from last year. We also know that this is not normal, right? Uh, it's uncharted territory all the time, uh, but uh, we are happy that you chose uh, this program. Uh, I have to say that over the past few years, uh, at least ever since uh, I've been dean, this has been one of the most uh, innovative and creative programs, whether it's master's thesis, non-thesis, or the PhD. So you've made a great selection. Uh, congratulations. Uh, I don't know how many of you are in Montreal. Uh, I hope quite a few of you. Uh, and uh, we'd really like to be there in person if we can uh, and meet you and uh, welcome you uh, in person. All I want to say is that at the Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, we're there to support you. Uh, you've got your director, and Dr. Mawali. You've got a lot of uh, supervisors around you to help you. And uh, you also have uh, several administrators, because that's who we are now. We're administrators, so dean, associate deans. Mm -hmm. And I think the associate deans are going to be talking right after me. But just to know that we're here to ensure your success because we've admitted you to the to McGill and we're gonna be here to help you succeed and graduate with whatever you want uh, as degree from a great program. So thank you for having me. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Batanglu. Uh, next slide, Laura. So this is our Associate Dean, Dr. Lorraine Chalifo. Uh, Lorraine, a few words. Yeah, also you can see a somewhat different picture. <laughs> so, what can I say? <laughs> Things happen. Um, so again, I want to reiterate that we're here to help you. I, I strongly suggest that you look at the GPS website. That's Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies. There's a lot of really helpful information there on how to navigate uh, uh, things for funding, for how to fund your studies, how to navigate supervisor, supervisee relationships. What are your duties? What is your supervisor supposed to do? The other thing is uh, answer a lot of questions when you get to the fun part, which is writing your thesis, which should be a living document and make, you, know, you can actually start pretty soon. So the idea being is, you know, you want to make sure that you have a thesis that's going to be exemplary and really reflect the great things that you've done here. So Make sure that you, you know, know what you're supposed to put in there and what you don't need to put in there either and don't waste your time. The other things associate deans uh, do, and I never want to see you in this aspect, is we look at things like research integrity, you know, plagiarism, cheating, things that I will never find, you know, and never have any issues with you there. And uh, also, I really truly hope that you don't have any problems with your supervisors. If you do, then the idea being is that you should Try to iron these out earlier. Don't let them fester. Make sure that you and your supervisor are on the same path and you both know what your roles and responsibilities are. I think that way uh, your, your time here will be really productive and you'll have a lot of fun too because you're going to meet a lot of great other scientists. I mean, your, your supervisors are obviously really good. Your cohort here is uh, chosen for a reason. So 
you know, we're, we're looking for great things from you. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, next slide, uh, Laura. So this is our other associate dean, uh, Dr. Amy Ryan. Dr. Ryan, please. Hi, and I also want to welcome everybody. So I am the associate dean within the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences that oversees graduate studies. So we oversee funding programs. Uh, many of you will be applying to the internal co scholarship competition in the spring. We also oversee a number of other activities that we're working on to improve graduate student life. So we're working on a, a harmonized minimum stipend across the faculty that will be coming in effect for next year. I'll be looking for student input. Um, we've almost have a finalized document. Um, we're, we're getting feedback from the graduate program directors in the next couple of weeks and also from students. Uh, we have a student wellness group that works across the faculty. So there's representatives from every graduate student society within the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences that sits on that. And we have a new group that started actually last fall, started during COVID. That's called the Students Advocating for Equity, Diversity and Inclusion. And if anybody is interested in participating in any of those groups um, or uh coming to me with new ideas for other things that you want to see and promote within the faculty, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, we also deal with, you know, as was pointed out, uh, some conflicts, sometimes they come at different levels. We always encourage you first to uh, have open and clear communication with your supervisors. This is so essential that um, you really feel like that this is a partnership between you and your supervisor, that you can talk to your supervisor. And then if you have problems, you have Dr. Mwali to go to, uh, Dr. Shalafor, myself, there are other people that you can go to after that. But we, as, as Dr. Shalafor said, we really hope that we aren't gonna see you in our offices for those things. We hope that we see you in, in our offices for other activities that are going on within the faculty. Um, I also wanna sort of reiterate what was said. This is a really exciting graduate program. It is full of innovation. It is full of uh, new ways of doing things, new ways of teaching, new ways of learning. And so I really want to wish everybody really a successful time. Um, communicate, 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 take advantage. You all are going to be asked to uh, um, sign, uh, uh, oh, and I'm blanking what they're called now, a an agreement with your supervisor, right, on how your degree, how your training is going to look be an active participant in putting that together, right? This is a discussion, a chance for you to say, what do you need? How do you learn? And then also find out what are the expectations from your supervisor? And everybody's is gonna look a little bit different. So really be active, um, have a great time. This is so exciting to start a new project. I love starting new projects. So this is really a fun time. Um, you're going to sort of tap in and figure out what your potential is. And I wish you all the best in your studies and every success in your research. Thank you, Dr. Ryan. Uh, next, uh, Laura. Uh, this is our associate chair and the surgical innovation director, uh, Dr. Jake Barlett. Dr. Barlett. Is uh, Dr. Barlett here? Okay, I think uh, he might join us later. Uh, so let's, uh, Laura, let's move for the next. So uh, good afternoon and uh, a very warm welcome to the experimental surgery orientation. Uh, my name is Faxon Mwari. I'm the graduate program director and on behalf of the department, I would like to thank all the course directors, concentration directors, curriculum directors, administration and students for attending uh, this uh, meeting. I would like a uh, special thanks uh, to Dr. Leon Feldman, Dr. Uh, Nabatanglu, uh, Dr. Shalifo, Dr. Ryan, uh, Dr. Barlett, and also the non-thesis curriculum directors. Um, I thank you for all your work that you've done, uh, Dr. Bailey, Dr. Heliopolis, Dr. Haley, Dr. Fiore, Dr. Dekobam, Dr. Razik, and also not to forget the graduate funding uh, manager who's gonna talk to us, uh, Dr. Torres uh, today for attending. 
I would also like to thank all the professors uh, because this has been a really trying time and uh, they have stood up for, for the challenges that COVID has thrown at, at us. So uh, we have our magnificent, magnificent professors, uh, Dr. Annie Philip, Dr. Christian Flaheti, Dr. Labe, Dr. Gazia, uh, Dr. Hagland, Dr. Rosenzweig, Dr. Lapointe, Dr. Petro Pavaska, uh, Dr. Geladine Melli, Dr. Alice uh, Dragome, Dr. Ahmed Awood, uh, Thomas Fevens, Joshua Vostenbosch, and uh, the recent uh, um, who has joined our, our, our group, who was my former student, uh, Dr. Raul Gauri. So a warm welcome uh, for you, all students of the 2021-2022 academic year. So we have been waiting for you and we cannot wait to meet you in person. There has never been a, a time like now when we face uh, such historic challenges. And we know you've gone through all sorts of hoops, uh, but we know you are resilient, you are strong, and uh, we are going to get through this uh, together. And soon we'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. So no matter where you are from or what you hope to do in the future, today marks a special beginning. So we look forward to seeing you at McGill and hope that this is going to be a great experience and a transformational one for you. So thank you very much for choosing our department. Next slide, please. So this is our group uh, experimental surgery graduate program. Uh, some of you have already had, had uh, encounters with Sharon, uh, who's been with us for a long time now. <clears throat> And we've been joined by uh, Misha, uh, as, and uh, Misha has been working with us, and I think you have also interacted with Misha. Uh, we also have a uh, uh, part-time uh, who has joined at uh, Elish uh, Marshall, um, and also uh, we are getting some help from uh, Laura Epu, who's a data analyst uh, who helps us with uh, uh, crunching the numbers. So uh, a word uh, from Sharon. Next slide. Hi, everybody. Another warm welcome to you to the department and to McGill. These are a few important points that you really should get to know throughout your stay here. Always check on Minerva for your documents that can be missing or which need to be sent to service point. Registration as well. We are right smack in the middle now, I think, of the ad drop period. So take notes of those dates. Tuition, very important. Make sure to pay your fees on time. They'll slap a late charge on you if not. And regarding any awards that you may receive, you should make sure that your direct deposit is completed on Minerva. There's a, if you don't know the link, you can email me, I can send it to you, it's no problem. And um, our website is uh, continuously updated. So check on there for any news for awards, competitions, anything of that nature. Studentship, you can go onto the, uh, our website and also GPS website to check for the many competitions that are available for funding. There's a lot out there to know. And lastly, the uh, completion of the academic integrity tutorial, you'll note on your um, transcript, it may say a whole due to that not being completed. That needs to be completed. So that's quite important. Um, that's it for this slide. Here, more things. Emails. I'll, we will only be contacting you through your McGill email. We don't use the, uh, the ones that you first signed up with. We don't use that one anymore. And for registration, you must remain registered up until the term you graduate. Even if you've completed all your courses and you're just pursuing your research, you have to remain registered for every term until you graduate. And you'll see here that the minimum and maximum time in each program for the master's, it's uh, one and a half years, which is three terms. And the PhD, the minimum is uh, six terms. So, um, that, that's a bit of it for me. If you have any questions, you know my email. Contact me anytime. I'm more than willing to help. Any questions? Thank you. 
And next is Matthew Manorino, who is the president of our Graduate Student Society. So hi, everyone. My name is Matthew. I'm the president of ESGSS. So just a warm welcome to you guys to uh, joining the department. Uh, so just a little bit about ESGSS. We're the student group of the department. We're here to support the students in experimental surgery with uh, and help organize some social and academic events. So here are a list of uh, the members. So in just case you wanna, you need to contact one of us, here are the names and um, we have their uh, McGill emails associated. Can go to the next slide. So uh, some events we'll be organizing this year. Uh, of course, the research day, we'll have some uh, presentation workshops, some scientific workshops, and then we'll have some social events such as game nights and, and uh, uh, get to know you night is gonna be coming soon too at the end of the month. If we can go to the next slide. So uh, one important thing, and I'm not sure if all of you might've received our newsletter that was sent out earlier today, but we do have a call for nomination one of the uh, spots that's open is the ombudsperson for master students. And then we also have uh, Thule new uh, spots there. So if you're interested in joining ESGSS, please uh, go to the newsletter and, uh, and fill out the form so that you can uh, apply for one of these positions. If we can go to the next slide. Uh, and if there's anything, or if you want to keep up to date, we're going to be sending out the newsletter. We have all the social media platforms. And if you have any questions about student related uh, stuff, please feel free to email me. You can see here is my email, or you can even contact me at the ESGSS email. Well, welcome again. My my name is Laura Epure, and uh, we're going to start our short walk through all our programs. I'm going to present you the Master of Science and Non-Thesis program that is based primarily on academic coursework and short projects. Uh, and uh, the professor who's in charge is uh, Dr. Faxon Moale. Uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, it's a course um, a program. So you have to complete 45 credits, uh, 21 are required courses and complementary courses. You have 21 credits. The full list, you can find it on, on the website and also three credits that are elective. I would like to emphasize on um, one of the, um, the courses, the six to two, that it's a, it's a non-thesis um, uh, course required. You have to complete it and it's very important. I'm gonna explain how it works. So uh, before you, um, you start your, uh, your course, you have to find one of the decide to, but to, to get one of the departments that you want to, to have your course. These are the curriculum directors that are in charge of the, the non-thesis uh, program. You select exactly what uh, interest you have in which domain and you contact them. And after that, you will get an advisor. The, the course it's for two semesters. So you have to be careful that you have to finish this as soon as possible. If you want to see how you are evaluated, we are inviting you to, to go online on the tracking for non-thesis of the course. And you, you can click, it's an interactive uh, form that you can click on each form to see exactly how uh, you'll be evaluated and the deadline to submit your required documentation to complete the course. The coordinator for this course, it's Misha and myself. If you have questions, you can contact us by email anytime. So if we are talking about frequently asked questions, is a non-thesis project requirement, the six to two? Yes, it is mandatory. And uh, we encourage the students to complete this in the first year. Keep in mind that it's two semesters and has to be one after the other one. So considering for your non-thesis, you have uh, three semesters or maximum four to, to fill this, it's really important to register in the first, as soon as you, you get in the program. The second question, 
uh, we have another project, the 623, that it's kind of similar, but it's only one semester. It's just uh, half of the previous. And as a non-thesis student, can I register for the two courses in the same time, 623 and 622? Our answer is no. We want our students first to complete 622 project and after that, the 623, if they wish to do so. We are also would like to present you a nice internship, a very interesting that we have only in the summer period, uh, 501 and 502. The internship for each uh, courses, it's six weeks, it's full time. So it's not just two hours per day or, uh, or a day per week, it's full time, sing, uh, this meaning 35 hours per week. And here, when you do the internship, you have, um, if you, it's a good experience if you want to, to have contact with the industry. The internship, it's done in, in collaboration with different industrial partners, and you will work at their site for this period of time, and you will learn a lot about industry. So, for the 501, it's no prerequisite, but for 502, you have to complete 501 to be able to register to 502. Now, Dr. Moale will, uh, will guide you through the, the thesis uh, program. Uh, thank you very much, Laura. Uh, so there are uh, two thesis uh, programs. There's the PhD, that's the uh, highest degree offered. <laughs> and then we've got the master's uh, uh, programs. As uh, Dr. Ryan said, uh, we have really exciting uh, programs uh, here. <clears throat> we have got uh, the core stream is experimental in experiment surgery. Uh, it, it's, uh, uh, and then we have got concentrations and really exciting concentrations, uh, probably very unique uh, worldwide. Uh, and, and so we've got surgical innovation. Um, we've got surgical education and then we've got global surgery, and then we have got the, uh, uh, the uh, two new kids on the block, uh, digital health and also surgical outcomes. So next slide. Now, there is a tracking system uh, that is done for this. Uh, first, you need uh, to have an adv advisory chairperson, and this is assigned to you by the department. And, and so the other question is how many people do you need in your committee? Uh, so the committee of the chairperson, and then you have got two additional committee members. And so uh, they, the, 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 the people who choose to, when uh, you're going to convene the meeting are the responsibility of you and your supervisor. So the committee is important because one, it monitors your progress, the progress of your project. And secondly, it functions as a resource. So they are there to help you. Um, so please make sure that uh, you use the resources uh, and the, the, the advice that is given by, by the committee. When do you meet? As soon as possible. We, we, we encourage uh, meet, having a first meeting uh, to be held at least within the first three months of the, uh, when you start the program. And this is so that the, uh, the chair familiarizes with your project and they know that, uh, you know, that it is feasible or not. If there are problems, there has to be, uh, they, you know, it's, it's better to be ironed out as early as possible. Uh, the other thing is that uh, you are required to meet with your full advisory committee for a minimum of at least once a year until you graduate. So this is very, very important. They are there on your side uh, to be uh, able to chaperone you through uh, the, the, the thesis. Uh, um, next slide. <laughs> okay, so uh, next slide. Uh, so uh, the Masters of Science uh, Experimental Surgery has 45 credits. As you can see that the uh, 30 credits are dedicated to the thesis courses. This includes the research and the thesis. And then there are required courses. Uh, pay special attention to the required courses. 
And then there are also complementary courses. Uh, so they are to come to a total of about 15 credits um, to come up to 45 credits. Next slide. Now you can fast track from a master's uh, to a PhD, uh, from master's one to PhD. Now this is open to students who have shown uh, superior performance and the supervisor basically sends a letter to me and then the fast track exam uh, is, uh, is, is performed. Uh, so there's a requirement to have an exam. After successful completion of this fast track exam, you have to notify the GPC, you have to submit your application and you apply to, to, to fast track. Uh, and pay attention that the, there are deadlines that also apply uh, to the fast track applications. Next slide. Now, who can fast track? We, uh, as I said, we need uh, so students who have a strong academic record and uh, the CGPA should be a minimum of 3.5. Um, they have to show strength, a strong evidence of uh, uh, success completion. So basically their research has to show a lot of promise and this is a grade upon by the, the advisory uh, committee. <coughs> Now there's a completion of a, a minimum of two full-time terms in the master's program. And this can be up to a, a maximum of four, four full-time uh, terms. Next slide. Now, uh, in, in terms of uh, the exam, the exam committee, you have your supervisor, members of your research advisory committee, and you have to add two additional members. As for the fast track exam, this is organized by you and your supervisor in consultation with the research advisory committee. So you, what you do is you submit a, a progress report uh, to the transfer exam committee. So you have to do this weeks before the scheduled exam. And, and that's the time that the exam uh, takes uh, about 20 minutes presentation. And this is followed by a uh, question period. Next slide. Now the PhD, uh, it's not an extended master's. So the, the, the nature is quite different. It must be a distinct contribution to knowledge. So there has to be novelty. It has to have significance and it has to uh, have a, a certain level of impact that is uh, uh, acceptable uh, into the community. Next slide. Now, uh, some of the deans were uh, very excited uh, to be back. So I want to welcome you all this fall. Um, I think one of the questions that people have in terms of thinking about uh, surgical education is wondering, you know, kind of what it is exactly. And I think surgical education can be thought about in a kind of a simple way as it's really about improving surgical training, which is, I think, kind of what it sounds like. Um, this is a really broad discipline, though. It can include technical and non-technical skills and a variety of learning environments and tools and technologies. Simulation is a big part of surgical education, especially at McGill. That includes both virtual simulation, which can involve technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, um, or screen-based applications, as well as in-person. Um, those in-person ones uh, include standardized patients, uh, which are typically actors, high fidelity mannequins, uh, box simulators or cadavers, as well as in situ, uh, which are basically hospital-based uh, simulations. Some of the themes behind surgical education include innovations in teaching and learning approaches, educational applications of technology, uh, well-being, and assessment. Um, and just to echo some of what was said before, um, it can be a good idea if you're in a thesis program to certainly start thinking about that thesis early uh, two years goes by really quickly. It's a lot of fun, um, but uh, it's also good to keep in mind uh, and talk to your supervisor about what can you be doing at different phases of your thesis to make sure that you're progressing well. And again, it's good to start early. Um, and if you're doing a non-thesis program and are interested in some of in, in surgical education, if some of these themes or, or, or key words resonated with you, um, certainly let me know if you need a project. Um, and uh, Laura mentioned the non-thesis program, um, and uh, there's a variety of us that are available to kind of help uh, connect you with projects, um, and uh, many of us, myself included, supervise a number of projects. I think I supervised like five non-thesis uh, projects last year, uh, so uh, definitely um, 
would be happy to connect with some of you if you're interested in doing a non-thesis program. I think that's uh, all that I have to say, but I'll be in one of the breakout groups afterwards if you have any questions. So uh, Dr. Fiore, uh, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, <laughs> it's your turn. All right, I have some slides to share, Mish. I don't know if you're in charge. Am I allowed to do it? Yeah, I think it's working. All right. Can you guys see my slides? Yes. All righty. So hello and welcome, guys. I'm Julio Fiori. I'm an outcomes researcher and assistant professor in the Department of Surgery here at McGill. And I'm the director of the thesis program with concentration on surgical outcomes research and also one of the curriculum directors for the known thesis program. Uh, this is a very brief five minute presentation that will highly focus on the thesis program, but I'm sure the, inf the information that I'll provide will also be useful to the students in the known thesis program. So our master's um, program with concentration on surgical outcomes research is a new kid on the block, as Faxon said, and we have the first cohort of studying starting this fall. And in case you wonder what I mean by surgical outcomes research, this is an emerging field of research focused on the results or consequences of surgical and perioperative care interventions. Experimental surgery always had many students conducting research projects focused on surgical outcomes. And this number really uh, increased even further in recent years. However, we never had a master's concentration that was exactly tailored to fit the training needs of these students. So we are extremely excited to finally be able to bridge this gap. And our mission with this concentration is to offer students with world-class training in surgical outcomes research and also to provide the knowledge and skills required for students to start a successful career as a surgical outcomes scientist or clinician scientist. And just a brief background to show you guys why this program is so exciting. According to data from the WHO, over 300 million surgeries are conducted in hospitals around the world every year. Uh, approximately 2.5 million only in Canada. And although surgery is recognized to be an essential component of healthcare, complications and postoperative morbidity are very common, occurring in around 15% of all the patients that go in major surgery. And a large proportion of these complications are considered to be preventable by optimizing perioperative care. And as you can imagine, Postoperative complications also pose a major burden to the healthcare system, with studies suggesting an up to five-fold increase in costs compared to patients without complications. So in response to these very green statistics, the WHO deems that improving the quality and safety of surgical care is a global public health concern. And given this concern, of course, there is an increasing need for robust research and to improve the outcomes of surgical patients. And also there is a growing demand for scientists and clinician scientists who are skilled in the design, conduct, and critical appraisal of surgical outcomes research. So our master's concentration really capitalizes on this emerging field because it's tailored to the training needs of future surgical outcome scientists. And in terms of our program content, uh, our concentration have a total, uh, has a total of 45 credits. 33 of these credits are required courses, courses including the 30, uh, th the 30 uh, thesis credits, and also three credits coming from a new course named Surgical Outcomes Research Foundations. And in addition to these mandatory courses, students are also required to complete, uh, complete 12 credits of complementary courses. At least of six of these credits will be acquired through courses on research methods and by statistic, statistics, which are key uh, subjects in the field of surgical outcomes research. And through another six credits, students will be able to pursue um, specific knowledge that is relevant to their graduate projects in other um, complementary courses. But these, all, like these complementary courses need to be approved by the student supervisor and also by their advisory committee. 
And just taking a minute to focus on our course, Surge Code Country Research Foundation, which is one of the pillars of our concentration. This course will be offered starting from the winter to um, 2022 and will be directed by myself and also by Chelsea Gillis, who's a brilliant outcome researcher from Anesthesia. And this course will be taught by us and also by internationally renowned uh, guest lectures. And the content will focus on traditional and modern approaches to measure, uh, measure surgical outcomes and also contemporary strategies to improve post-operative recovery. And a list of the spe specific lectures and lectures that will uh, be part of this course are displayed here on the, the screen. As I mentioned, this course will be mandatory for all the students in the thesis program with concentration on surgical outcomes. But of course, this course is open to students also like in the non thesis stream and any other students from other concentrations who wish to take this course as an elective. So on behalf of the outcomes researchers in the Department of Surgery, I welcome you all to the experimental surgery program. We're all very excited to start this new chapter for surgical outcomes um, research at McGill with this new master's concentration. Unfortunately, I have a conflict of schedule and won't be able to be in the breakout rooms, but you guys can feel free to reach out to me by email at any time with questions. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Pierre. Uh, So is uh, so Dr. Jacobarum had to go. Uh, is Dr. Razik here? So anyway, basically this is uh, the global surgery, and um, they uh, they have for uh, the thesis uh, thirty credits. Of course, the, all of these the totals are forty five credits, and nearly all all of them the thesis uh, and uh, uh, comes to about thirty credits. And here are the required courses here uh, in global surgery. So this is very, very exciting. Uh, please uh, go and check out their website. Um, so it is quite very unique in that uh, you are able to, to uh, get uh, attention to other countries as well to see how uh, things are working and how you can be involved. So next slide, uh, Laura. So, uh, Dr. Walker. Hello, thank you. Yes. Um, I will share my screen, my screen, please. Okay. Hi. So, um, thank you for um, inviting me. My name is Jan Walker, and no, it's not Dr. Walker, but thank you. I appreciate that anyway. <laughs> um, Welcome to McGill University, everyone. Um, I'm here today to introduce to you graduate and postdoctoral studies graduate funding. So graduate funding has four major roles, and they are making sure that funding information is available for all of our graduate students, including international student funding, federal and provincial funding, sponsorships, and internships. We keep fair and transparent adjudication processes of all our centrally administered fellowships and awards from GPS fund competitions. We are also able to assist in the development and modification of policies regarding graduate funding and student eligibility, both internally to McGill and with outside agencies. And always we give our voice to you to support and advocate for all of our graduate students with external agencies. Now there are two principal types of funding, internal and external. I'll begin with internal funding. Now this is financial support that is distributed by the university in different ways. All incoming students are automatically considered for and may be offered inter internal funding. However, some academic units may have their own respective funds. Central McGill funds come from different sources such as endowments, donations, government bodies, etc. Some faculties and academic units have their own opportunities that you may have to apply for. Be sure to discuss what opportunities are available for you with your graduate program coordinator. Most professors have research grants that they may use to help fund students under their supervision. Now, there may also be employment possibilities in your unit as a research or teaching assistant, for example. Note that these funds, note that funds received for these 
are considered salary for employment and are subject to the corresponding union's collective agreements. So McGill, McGill Central Funds work like this. All monies come into one big pot. Using a formula, that pot is shared with each faculty. Each faculty uses their own formula and policies to, re to redistribute their share to their units, usually keeping a chunk at the faculty level as well. Now, each unit is then tasked with offering this to their students. You will see this in your offer of admissions letter. Now we have external funds, and this is where I work. These are monies awarded to students that come from external funding agencies. The most prominent are the Canadian Federal Research Funding Agencies and the Quebec Provincial Funding Agencies. As you can see, each level of government has three specific agencies. Each one of these agencies are direct their funds for three different fields of research. A very important note is to be sure that you select the, co the correct funding federal and or provincial agency that corresponds with your research. Now these awards must be applied for and our web pages have a ton of really important information and instruction for you. So please go and check us out. Anyone who submits an application to one of the provincial agencies are required to send the application number to their unit. A special note for students in the health sciences, which are you, that there are many agencies and foundations that offer student fellowships. Check them out. Google can be a really good friend at this point, as well as your supervisor. A very quick overview of our webpage for information on specific funding opportunities. Our main GPS funding page leads you to the following a listing of funding opportunities that you can get to by first selecting your corresponding registration status. Then based on your program of study for the award, citizenship and field of research, you can find awards that you would be eligible for. You can also meet and see the bios of some of our really prestigious uh, previous award winners. You can get tips and tricks for creating really good proposals and winning applications by our going to our page maximize my chances, as well as find out how to get your payments on a page appropriately named Getting Paid. For international students, there are a couple of important sources of funding and they may be sponsorships or DFWs. Now sponsorships are agreements between GPS and an international funding agency. The agreements include co-funding by McGill with an international agency abroad. Sponsorships are restricted to incoming and first year students, and they usually cover tuition, international health insurance, and an annual living allowance. To see if we have a sponsorship agreement with an agency in your home country, please visit our website where you can find details on how to apply. DFWs or differential fee waiver. Now this is an exemption of the fees charged to international students, the amount over and above what a Quebec resident student would pay. This does not include your international health insurance. DFWs come as a result of a bilateral agreement between Quebec and a foreign government. This is how it works. After their own selection process, a country will nominate their selected candidates to the Quebec government, who in turn will perform a final selection and inform the candidate and the university. Application steps for students include, first, determine whether there is a bilateral exemption for your country, by consulting the list of countries that have established such agreements. You can find them by going to this link. This is a link to the Quebec Provincial webpage. If the country or affiliated agency does have a bilateral exemption, contact the appropriate authority for that country or agency, which you will find listed here. Now, do beware, deadlines vary greatly country to country. So please go and check out this webpage as soon as possible. A couple of process of uh, the process for uh, funding competitions that are in that uh, we administer here at McGill. So first thing, always know your deadline. Talk to your units graduate office. Make sure that they don't have a deadline set for you earlier. Instructions, please read them. Read them more than once. Follow them. Forty percent of all rejected applications are simply due because somebody didn't follow an instruction. Please don't let that be you. Submit at the correct place and please submit on time. A late application equals no application. 
Your unit will make a pre-selection and nominate to GPS dependent upon their quota. All eligible and complete nominated applications will then go through an internal selection process here at GPS. Based on Miguel's quota, selected applicants are then forwarded to the funding agency. A note that the final selection for the CGS Masters Awards are determined right here at McGill and are not forwarded to any agency. One of my favorite pages, getting paid. So you've received either in the mail or an email saying that congratulations, you've been offered an award from this agency. Great, the, agent, the notice of award also says McGill will administer the payment of this award. You sit back and you wait, where's your money? Well, if you don't let anybody know that this, that this award is for you, then there's nobody knows to pay it to you. So please, if you receive a notification that you have been offered an award from an external funding source, let your unit know. Note that tri-agency award payments are processed here by graduate funding. Most other external award payments are processed by your unit. When in doubt, email graduate funding and please remember to include your new McGill ID number. Include your McGill ID number in all your communications with us. Also, if it's concerning a new award, please include your notice of award. Remember that TA ships and RA ships are employment. So these opportunities are paid via payroll and also administered by your unit. Stipends offered from your supervisor come from the research grants, and again, processed by your unit. Now, to avoid delays, please make sure that you are registered for any term your award will cover before the start of that term. Submit any and all documentation to the appropriate unit or office. Example, your notice of award. Update your banking information and current mailing address on Minerva. Word of caution, when entering your bank account number, please make sure it's the correct bank account number. Yes, it happens. Somebody else could get your money. Yes, you will get it back, but it does take time. It's a hassle and stress, and it's your responsibility. So please just be careful of that. those numbers that you put into Minerva. Go and visit our webpage, Getting Paid. It'll have all the instructions and what documents ne you need to submit where and when. Oops, sorry about that. So a note for international students or all students, you must have a Canadian bank account for any award or employment payments that go through McGill. A note again, specifically for international students who may be arriving late due to immigration issues, you will not be able to receive payments until you have opened your Canadian bank account and updated this information on Minerva. Questions about this should be directed to your graduate program coordinator. Student web webinars. Um, a couple of these have passed already. The CIHR webinars given by the CIHR staff. There's one at 1 p.m. Uh, sorry, that passed. There's another English one at 10 a.m. on Thursday. I strongly suggest that you attend it. For our French-speaking uh, students, the CIHR is on Wednesday at 10 and Thursday at 1. An introduction to provincial FRQ, that was given on September 1st. If you go to our webpage, Maximize My Chances, a link to the presentation slides and um, the recorded uh, session is uh, is linked on that page. The Masters Canada Graduate Scholarship, the webinar is going to be held on the 21st of October at 4 p.m. Please go and register. You can register that, yes, on Maximize My Chances. Some links for you to uh, bookmark. Please, if you're going to bookmark any of them, make sure that it's at least our main page. Everything else can be linked to from there. Other resources for you, um, besides our Maximize My Chances skill sets, they have a great program called Would You Fund It? There's also the Grapples uh, Writing Workshop. And this link is um, uh, gives you tips for uh, writing a really good research proposal. 
You can meet our team. Our external funding team is Esther DeCorey, our fellowships officer, myself, Jan Walker, the fellowships administrator, and Edmundo Tilly, our student affairs coordinator. Our internal funding team, Lilia Eskelson, our budget funding manager, Hannah Hu, the administrative and student affairs coordinator, and Quinter Faith, the student affairs coordinator. If you want to contact us, please use our graduatefunding.gps at mcgill.ca. Please do not email our um, personal inboxes. We don't have time to go and look at them. I haven't even thought about looking at mine today. Six pairs of eyes are on this graduate funding email. So please use that one and always include your McGill ID number. I suggest that you put the ID number in the subject line. It's easy for us to find. And a lot of our questions, a lot of your questions will for us to answer are dependent on knowing what program you're in, what level you're in. So having your ID number just makes it easier for us to answer you, answer your emails in the um, in a very quick and efficient manner. So that ends um, my presentation for today. Once again, I wish you all the best and again, welcome. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Walker. That's uh, wonderful. Um, next uh, slide, uh, Laura. So uh, we have a lot of goodies apart from uh, what uh, uh, Ms. Walker uh, told you about. There's funding for travel. Uh, there's uh, what we call regular graduate mobility award. Uh, so this funding is for uh, traveling it's necessary to graduate research. So the students uh, who are already abroad can apply to do uh, uh, for this uh, funding. Uh, and so they can do research in their current country, for example, of residence. Uh, that is if uh, uh, travel is not uh, required. There's also the remote research and online workshop. So you can have projects uh, in collaboration with other uh, out of province, international institutions and that are eligible for funding. So you, you can get up to $2,000. So look out uh, for these uh, uh, awards. So the next slide. So, uh, so we have another award, which is called the GREAT Award. So this is designed to provide funds for, so that you can, you can support your research uh, when you go to conferences, uh, for example, or any other meetings. So you can receive up to $1,000. Um, so you can get this uh, great award once, uh, only one great award per the year, the academic year. So uh, just remember that this is granted for the uh, students or applicants their own research. Uh, and if there is no additional funding available from any other external uh, sources. So uh, next slide, please. Now, as a student uh, at McGill, you have rights and you have responsibilities. And so this is quite very important. So it's important that uh, you are aware of this. There are policies on students' rights and responsibilities. And uh, there are also uh, policies on research supervision and also very importantly on academic integrity. So we have got those websites. It's very, very important that you are aware of these uh, uh, important uh, 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 responsibilities. Next slide. Now, this uh, doesn't require any definition. Uh, plagiarism. So we have zero tolerance to plagiarism. As Dr. Shalifo said, uh, if you don't want to see Dr. Shalifo on plagiarism, please don't even attempt to plagiarize. Uh, it's not worth it at all. So we have zero, uh, zero uh, you know, we, we, we don't tolerate plagiarism. Next slide. So the other thing that we have zero tolerance is harassment. And this is, uh, uh, learn how to file a report under McGill's uh, policy against, se uh, against sexual violence uh, or a complaint under the policy of harassment and discrimination. Uh, so this all is prohibited by law. 
Uh, so next slide. Now there is ethics in research, and that's important to be aware of. And uh, uh, this is very important in terms of regulation. It uh, establishes a certain framework for the conduct of your research. So uh, depending on which research you are doing, uh, there are norms to follow. There are ethics to follow. Uh, so that is very, very important that you are, you are aware of this. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, the, so, so that the, you don't fall into any sort of uh, uh, problems. Next slide. So there is the return to campus. We are not in normal times. Uh, we are still in the pandemic. And uh, it's important that you are aware of uh, uh, the, uh, some websites that we have at McGill. We have the COVID-19 websites that is always being updated. And there's also a website at McGill that has uh, uh, frequently uh, uh, asked questions. We also have uh, an update on our website, experimental surgery uh, website. As you can see here, uh, in August, there are, there are it, you know, it was on campus activities with one meter distancing. Students and instructors <coughs> start to attend to campus. Um, uh, so so uh, in September and October, yeah, there are certain changes, things have got better. There are more restrictions that have been lifted in Montreal. And so we have uh, moved to the green label. So all students and instructors are advised to be on campus. My view, we have shifted to no distancing phase. So 175% of uh, uh, age 16 to 20, nine percent uh, uh, nine uh, age population is fully vaccinated so most of the courses and activities have moved to in person and this is uh, an advice from McGill and advice from the government so please check out all these uh, websites because they are in flux things change so uh, be aware of that next slide now, here are some COVID-19 classroom guidelines. There have been a lot of questions about this. And as I said, the information is always in flux, depending on, on, on how things change. Uh, so the current requirements are that there's no distancing in classrooms or teaching labs. So there are certain exceptions, but that's... Uh, so there are mandatory face masks in all indoor spaces at McGill. Uh, but if you're in common areas, students and staff, you have to maintain a one meter distance uh, minimum. But if you are in areas, you see there are a, certain, a lot of areas in McGill where you can eat, uh, the drinking, and when exercising, you need a two meter minimum uh, distancing. So again, that's the website that you should uh, visit, the COVID-19 uh, update. Uh, so the next slide. We encourage you to get vaccinated. We know there's a debate on this. Uh, so we encourage you to get vaccinated. <laughs> you keep yourself and others safe. We, we believe that vaccination is the single best protection against COVID-19 for you and your loved ones. Um, we also believe that the high rates of vaccination is the best protection for our society. So get vaccinated, Peyton McGill's uh, COVID-19 site tells you how and, uh, and where you, you can get vaccinated uh, in Quebec. Now, uh, just so that we are now, we have started uh, vaccine passports. Uh, I remember going to the gym and I was asked for a vaccine uh, passport. So there are vaccine passports uh, in certain areas. Uh, so this is very, very important that you are aware uh, of this. So next slide. So Adriana. Adriana, are you here? Yes, sorry, I was just fumbling around with my with my uh, mouse and keys. Okay. Hello. <laughs> okay. Hi, so I'm Adriana. I am the coordinator for the IRR, Re Injury Recovery Repair Research Program, which 
often works closely with experimental surgery uh, to put on events, to facilitate research. Uh, but today I'm just gonna quickly talk about um, the Students Advocating for Equity, Diversity and Inclusion initiative. So this is essentially a student community initiative that is meant to uh, build support for underrepresented, marginalized and racialized students. Uh, it is there to educate society within science and academia. It's there to implement action uh, and institutional change to ensure that there is substantial change and support for uh, students who are marginalized or underrepresented. Uh, so if you want to get involved or know more about what they do, uh, you can email them over there. It says so, safe at mcgill.ca. So yeah, next slide. And congratulations to all of you who are starting your graduate degree. I'm Nicole, and I'm a PhD student in Rehabilitation Science in the Faculty of Medicine. I'm going to introduce the essential resources that McGill has to support your success throughout your graduate degree. In fact, there are so many resources that it can be hard to know where to look to find them. To make it easier for you, we've created a website that organizes essential resources for your success into three broad categories of academics, well-being and student life, and careers and professional development. The link to the website is mcgill.ca slash first year slash graduate postdoctoral. On the website, select resources for success on the left hand side of the menu. It will show a list of resources describing what they do and how you can contact them. I'm going to highlight some of the resources in each of these categories. When you first think about your success as a graduate student, you probably think about your academic work. Under the Academics tab, you'll find links to several resources to support you. Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, or GPS, has essential information on funding opportunities as well as preparing and submitting your thesis. Through GPS, you can also access pd.education, which is an online platform that provides resources, interactive webinars, and tools to help graduate students progress in and complete their degree. Another McGill service to support you is the Office for Students with Disabilities, or OSD. If you have documented disabilities, mental health illness, uh, chronic illnesses or other impairments, whether they be permanent, temporary, or episodic, OSD can help you receive accommodations and support to meet your needs, including adaptive technology or connecting with a learning resources advisor. Under the Wellbeing and Student Life tab, you'll see a list of services offered to graduate students at McGill. Half of these services are offered by the university and the other half are offered by student groups. The Student Wellness Hub is where you access different resources for health and wellness, including counseling services, physician appointments, and programming by local wellness advisors. There are links here to the Virtual Hub, which describe the remote services available. Campus Life and Engagement is here to help you acclimatize, settle in, and find the people and services you need. They offer different programming to help connect you to resources and the community here at McGill. Under this tab, you'll also find student-run associations that offer services to graduate students. It's important to know about the Postgraduate Student Society, or PGSS. PGSS advocates for you, graduate students and postdoctoral fellows, in meetings with the university. They also offer social opportunities, including virtual events and programming. Another student-led service is McGill Students Nightline a confidential, anonymous, and non-judgmental active listening service. You can call if you need advice or just someone to talk to as you help work through whatever you're feeling. Although you're just starting your degree, you're probably also thinking about where it's going to take you after graduation and what kinds of doors it will open. Under the Careers and Professional Development tab, you'll find links for Career Planning Service, or CAPS, 
which offers individual career advising and workshops to prepare you for the academic or non-academic job market. CAPS also hosts the My Future website, where you can search for jobs and manage your career. You'll also find the link to Skill Sets, which offers over 200 professional development workshops and events every year specifically designed for graduate students. For example, there's Would You Fund It, which helps you develop a winning fellowship application, as well as workshop series to strengthen leadership skills. These events are designed to help you succeed in both your academics and your career. Lastly, I want to highlight that GPS created My Path, which can help you manage all three of those domains to have a meaningful experience at McGill. MyPath's mission is to help students and postdocs pursue their goals using an individual development plan, or an IDP. You can think of your IDP as a tailored roadmap that guides you from where you are now to where you want to be. So as you can see, wherever you're at in your trajectory as a graduate student, there are many resources that will guide and support your success here at McGill. I encourage you to learn more about these different resources at the website I just presented to you, mcgill.ca slash first year slash graduate postdoctoral. I'd like to wish you a wonderful, successful, and enriching graduate experience here at McGill. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Adriana. And um, uh, thank you very much all for listening. Uh, Sharon, are you here? I'm here. <laughs> so, now it's, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Sharon. Okay, just now it's the breakout room. So everyone should have access, access to it. I believe you just click on the room, if I'm not mistaken. You will be uh, beamed into it, basically. And um, feel free to email our team, Nisha, myself, Dr. Mawali, any of us, if you have any questions, any concerns, and uh, we're here to help you. So um, I hope this was a very informative session for you. And um, I hope we look forward to meeting each and every one of you one day in person. So enjoy the breakout rooms, and uh, we'll be in touch. <laughs>